So metacognition sounds way more complicated than it actually is. Um, it's sometimes described as thinking about your own thinking. In my mind, it's kind of like Inception. If any of you have seen that film, um, a dream within a dream inside of a dream, um, it's a thought within a thought. And you evaluate that thought from the outside. You're thinking about how you're thinking. Um, it's a really cool idea. And it's useful for us to think about that. It's useful for us to consider why we think the way we think. So when you are reading, there are different skills and methods that can be worked on and used to help you better understand the text. For example, there is annotating. When you are reading through something and you're making notes as you go, um, it's just you taking notes. You can use a pen or a pencil in addition to your highlighter if you're working in a physical book. There's also a lot of really cool programs out there, um, a lot of different PDF readers that allow you to do that um, electronically. Things like perusal, hypothesis, and power notes are really useful um, programs to use for that type of thing. But when you are practicing metacognitive reading, you can underline, you can draw stars or question marks, you can summarize difficult things or ask questions in the margins, and you can always return to those things and think about them more later. Um, if you see something important, you mark it. Um, it's metacognitive because as you read, you're constantly interacting with the text and you're checking your understanding. And when you talk to the text, you're asking questions about the text, um, you're interacting and engaging with the text, and your goal is to get a better understanding. So definitely, I, I highly recommend using this method of um, reading as you read over your um, assigned readings this week. It can help you gain a better understanding, make connections between the texts. Um, but I wanted to model that for you guys. Um, here is an excerpt from one of my favorite Appalachian authors, Gurney Norman's book, Divine Rights Trip. So the way you would practice talking to text, um, you're asking questions as you read your work. So I guess we'll begin. About eight o'clock, a man in a red hunting cap came out of the camper parked next to Urge. Who is Urge? You're, you're thinking about what you're reading and began dismounting the yellow trail back from the front end of his GMC. He was short and overweight, but you could tell by the way he wore his cap and held his pot between his teeth that he took himself pretty seriously. His face was absurdly handsome. Who's talking? Who is writing this? His face could have been on TV, been in a TV ad for pipe tobacco or men's cologne, probably in some previous incarnation of the Lone Outdoorsman. What is the Lone Outdoorsman? Is that a is that a book? Is it a TV show? Like you're actively asking these questions. Anything that pops into your mind, you're taking note of that. You're talking to the text and communicating. It's like a dance. And you can write in the margins if you don't have a program or something. Um to do that with for your e-text, you could always get a piece of paper, write down notes, note pages and things like that um, in a notebook. But it's really handy and it can help you make connections later on. Um, you write down one note right now and then 30 minutes later after you've read a little longer and you come back and look at your notes, you think back on it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to connect it to this that I saw later on and so on and so forth. So it's really useful. Um, I highly recommend you guys use talk to text this week and not just this week, but hopefully in other classes. I'm a big fan of transfer, um, just like Dr. Fox here at EKU. Um, the skills you learn here, you can use in other classes. So practice, practice a little bit um, as you're reading this week's text, and I hope it helps.